swarm of Burchellia is bivouacked in this tree behind me here and will stay here for approximately 21 days. The problem I am studying is what sort of area the ants require to survive and also what sort of area the birds that follow the ants require to survive as well. These birds follow the army ant swarms and prey on those insects that are fleeing from the army ants. So when an insect on the forest floor finds an army ant swarm coming, if that ant swarm has army ant birds with it, the insect's in a real lot of trouble. Either the ants are gonna get them or there's a good chance that the birds will. And the interesting thing in terms of our study about these birds is that the army ants tend to move large distances and also tend to spend large periods of time inactive. And when that happens, the birds that follow the army ants obligately have to go look for another active ant swarm. Okay, so now let's let them get back to work and find another ant swarm. There he goes. I'm radio tracking my bird here, trying to locate him. He appears to be at the front of the army ant swarm here, probably not more than about 50 meters away. And I can pick up the beeps from the radio transmitter, which I attached to his back approximately one week ago. And since that time, I've been radio tracking him through the forest here. And he appears to be following the army ants every day during the day. And at night, he, in fact, also sleeps near the army ants. He will roost near the army ants about 30 minutes before sunset. And so the army ant either kills or scares the butterfly, which is then eaten by the ant bird, which in its turn is the normal prey of a hawk. The hawk was a Macraster gilvocalis. It's a barred forest falcon that feeds on small birds. Uh, I placed a radio transmitter on this small falcon several days ago, and I was able to follow the falcon through the forest. It appeared as though the falcon was in fact following the birds that were following the ants in order to eat, to have a food source in, in the bird flock.